Greetings out there in YouTube land from the planet Earth. I'm in the voice chat with my son. He's muted right now, right? He's eating something. And I, I was telling him one of the stories uh, when I was out in British Columbia, you know, where God, oh man, he had to save my life. Something so simple. I got some pictures of them. You have to imagine yourself. A lot of people are doing this now, but I did it a long time ago uh, with a friend of mine. And we were by this lake one time. This is a huge lake, right? And we saw this top of this hill. So we're going to go up there and be on top. As you notice, a lot of these things have uh, grass and stuff on there. And I was wearing work boots with a full pack on my back. Uh, we were young and stupid, you know. It, that, that's what thought would be really good at the time. Right? We were young and stupid, right? But like many of these other people, we wanted, we wanted to be there on the top. I mean, when you look at the views, right? And you see that, like this guy here, that was me and my friends. Like, I walked away from jobs, from my friend, let's go on an adventure to do things like this right here, right? That was what we did. Right? This is how we lived, right? No joke. We just lived, right? No nothing, just went and did it. We were alive, right? Those are the times when God showed himself to me, right? So these people, they do it now, they know all the modern stuff. But that was us right there, and we didn't bring ropes and stuff. But we were, We just... They, whatever was over there, we overcame, right? That was it, you know. Hey, we were manly men, you know. Yes, you know. Back then, when you're young and stupid, we didn't go around little hills. We went over them because we're manly men, right? And that, those are the days of young and stupid, okay? But on this one time, uh, we were up there, and, and um, when I got to the top, I didn't, I didn't even think or realize about any grass being there because you see, we so many go out there to do these things. I'm not the only one. They're doing it now. Come on in. I'm just. Okay, and it was the most amazing thing. I got a guy, Mr. Hang on a second. Come on in, I'm ministering. You can just sit for a second, okay? I'll be almost done with you. Hang on. And the, the amazing thing was, when I went up there, my foot slipped. And you know, you you all heard of those stories where you're sliding down. That, and all you do is that little bit to slip, right? And then the rest will take care of it. You're sliding down the back of your pack. You can't get your, your heels to dig in nothing. And all of a sudden, my right hand cut this tree. It was a little evergreen tree, about the thickness of your thumb. And about half my, like, from the waist down, it's hanging over the edge of the, the cliff, right? The little cliff over there, it's straight down, right? And the other part, my hand is holding it, and I kind of, I can kind of look over a little bit there. And <coughs> that little lake, that, that it was huge lake, but it looked like a little puddle. Like you drop some, fill some water on the floor, and you're looking down at it, it looked like a little puddle from up way up there. It really did. It looked like, you're, you'd just be amazed. You went, whoa. I am, they say most people die before they ever hit the water out of fear, but if you hit that, I just, oh, I, I Every there's no way you'd survive. Period. No hands, it's your butts, right? Every bone in your body would be shattered. I just, I, you know, I just can't imagine, the, you know, hitting with that kind of velocity from way up there. But there, of all places, there was a little bit of grass and stuff. Not much there, right? But one single tree, one little tiny evergreen in the right place at the right time, and so small, but enough for me to get a handhold on to stop me from going over the edge, you know. And I, those are little the times that. I couldn't, like a lot of things, God's been moving mightily in my life, right? I, I didn't remember a lot of things, you know, because this is me, you know. They're not really me, but these other people do it. That's what I used to do. That's how I used to roll, right? I miss those days. And God's given them back to me. He said I can freely travel the world and do some of the things I used to do. So I have friends in many countries I'm going to be visiting soon. And they got some great hills and everything else there. And I'm going to do the things I used to do when I was young. Because God loves me and he gave me a chance to do it all over again for him. Wow, you would not believe the views when you look into it there. When you're in the tall country, you're looking out and the views will blow your mind. And they take, you know, those take away your breath moments where you're, where you just, everything around you is so beautiful. You just, you feel like one with everything. You know, when you're standing on the top of a mountain and looking over there and you see the clouds, you see other mountains and just, the views are breathtaking. Like the time that elk stood over me. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life. No, I, I appreciated it later after I left. The smell was something interesting, right? And most people don't like looking up at the back end of a, what, because I was worrying about it doing his business on me, as you might guess, <laughs> first, right? I didn't laugh about it. He still laughed about it. Later on, I realized I should have been worried about it stepping on me. It didn't take long to figure that one out. Because the thing was big, man. I've never seen a big, an elk this big in my entire life before. I thought it was one of the prehistoric ones back then, because that was in an area no people go. These animals had never seen people before, so they weren't afraid of us. They didn't even know what we were. And I am so glad it did not step in me. But when it put both feet shuffled at each side, they knew I was there. It ate the tobacco my friend had left open. Turned around and bowed like, thanks for the meal. And trotted off, man. <laughs> when I was taking really your breath moments, and I was going, whoa, I was sitting there in my seat. back. He knew I was there, and it didn't want to step on me. Like, man, I didn't, I didn't go hunting after that. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I didn't. I had my right leg. I didn't go hunting after that, like, ever again. Okay? I love animals. I had my own little Zuccarello, but 
there's certain moments of life that change your life. And God has blessed me with dogs, especially. Now, cats can be a different story. My guys are different, so they're not like your regular cats. Those things are easy to train, right? They really are, right? But mine were a gift from God, right? One was, and his descendants, I got to keep one of over uh, 120 of his babies, right? And he's very special. My guy, by himself, saw that I was sick, right? And he, he goes into the bathroom, you know, with the little drain holes in the tub, and you got to see him scooch there and aim right for the hole perfectly, and then do it. He's just sitting looking at the back, like, not like, hey, I'm not here, you know? So I was sitting there one day, and just, and I watched it because they, they knew I was sick and they didn't want to do it in the litter box. So they didn't just do the other business about making it easier on me so I didn't have to change the litter as much because they saw I was sick. They did that by themselves. Okay? In the sun here, right? God has a way with animals and, and, and a kind heart goes a long way. They knew I loved them. Right? And even though it, it was a little while, it from, took me from nursing back when they, uh, the guys tried to kill them when they came looking for me and when they got them, uh, they still respected me enough to do that for me. Even after Louis had all his ribs broken and little C had his throat cut and they were left for dead, God didn't abandon us at all. And he allowed me to nurse him back to health. And Louis just passed last year. And it's the little moments I remember now when God fixed my memory. And of the mountains I saw and the people I met. I used to travel. I miss Vienna. I haven't been in Vienna in a long time. I was so cold the first time I went there as a child. But I haven't been there in a long time. I haven't seen a lot of places. And God says, guess what? I get to travel. So I got a few things to take care of here, get my passport and all that stuff, you know, paperwork and stuff. I'm going to see the world again. So now I'm free to freely roam the earth because I got no big pharma change on me and no medicine that will cause an aneurysm before I even get to flying altitude again. So I will fly again. Thank you, Jesus. If you can do this for me, you can do anything for you. What is your mountain in life? Do you miss it? Call upon the Lord. Anything is possible with Jesus. He, especially when he takes a severe end stage terminal man like me. And gave me a whole new life. Think about it and give Jesus a call today. Bye bye.